The 2024 Spring Festival Gala broadcast live is an annual tradition. Viewers can watch on more than 2,100 media outlets in more than 200 nations and regions. The main event in Beijing with four supporting venues in other cities. Cao Xiaofeng was backstage at one of the shows. Changsha and other events are different from other events. This is a celebration of the spring. It's a fire festival. It's a creative festival. It's a new festival. This is the director of the Changsha sub-venue of this year's Spring Festival Gala. He and his team have been working tirelessly day and night, trying to make sure the show incorporates these elements of Changsha. As one of the most anticipated shows in China, most is kept a secret before it goes on air. What we know at this stage is that the segment from Changsha will include a vibrant music performance, mainly performed by local residents. Unlike in Beijing, where the performance is to take place in a closed-door studio, here in Changsha, majority of it is going to be filmed outside. But it's already below zero degrees here in Changsha. It's super cold, and all the performers are not wearing much. Thumbs up for their professionalism. The Spring Festival Gala is a show that's been with Chinese people for four decades. To many Chinese, it's a family tradition to watch it on New Year's Eve. To many performers, it's also a dream come true to take part. Both prestigious performers and ordinary people will take the stage together. And the team in Changsha hope the show will let everyone know more about the city and its friendly people. Cao Zhufeng, CGTN, Changsha. In Nanjing, villagers are celebrating the Year of the Dragon with a tradition that dates back more than 400 years. Wu Bin brings us the story of one of the largest dragons in southern China. It's the most important occasion for people in Luoshan village in eastern China's Nanjing. People from near and far come to see the Luoshan Dragon Dance, a ritual that's said to have started around 1600 AD in the Ming Dynasty. Consisting of 24 parts, the dragon is around 100 meters long. It's one of the largest and also the most traditional dragons in southern China. And before the dance begins, a crucial step is taken to bring the dragon to life. The entire performance requires over 500 people. That means almost all the families in the village need to be a part of it. And because the dragon is so large, to make it dance and twirl requires not only strength and agility, but also teamwork. The maintenance and repair of the dragon is crucial so that it can be used for generations to come. Chen Jibao has been doing this for decades. It's not only his work, but also his life. He knows every little detail of the Luoshan Dragon. We have seen this 我的心愿就是希望我们洛山大楼能够带带商船啊，能够让我们更多的传承人来进行创新。The effort of these craftsmen have paid off. Now the Luoshan Dragon has gained influence in the region, and for the Spring Festival, the village is also ready to welcome friends from afar to celebrate this ancient tradition with dancing and fireworks to welcome a great start of the new year. Wu Bin, CGTN, Nanjing.
What a spectacle, what a holiday. For more on this year's Lunar New Year festivities, we're joined by Chu Chiang. He is the Assistant Director of the International Monetary Institute. Thanks for coming to our program. I want to be not the first, but perhaps the latest to wish you a Happy New Year. Thanks for coming in. You know, let's, we've talked about the number of trips, the billions of trips that people are going to take. Where are people traveling to right now in China? And we've talked about the weather too. Do you think that is going to discourage people or, or they're going to find some way to push through? Well, first of all, Sean and all the audience, happy Chinese New Year and happy Loon uh, Spring Festival. Best wishes for the seasons. Well, I'm glad you asked about the travel numbers in China. Well, this is basically a very, very, you know, hot, you know, spring festival and Chinese New Year. The reason why is that even though the weather is still very cold, but still uh, you're, we're counting like, uh, you know, more than 9 billion times of the trips uh, during these holidays. I think there are several directions for people traveling. Uh, number one, you know, tourism has really become a very, very hot word. You know, in the recent spring festival, um, you know, people really are into tourism because after three years of the pandemic, people really want to go out, you know, to go around to take a look at the, uh, you know, strange places, and go to savor different cultures, foods, and, you know, get close to the nature. So I think it's a hot, you know, resort spot and hot cities to really become, you know, very popular, like what we have already viewed from, you know, the videos like Xi'an, like Changsha, like Shenzhen, and Beijing. And also, the short-term travel has also become very popular. For example, people are trying to visit their friends, uh, you know, uh, between, uh, you know, uh, cities. And also, uh, since we have the high-speed train, you know, still going on and very popular. So people probably will travel one or two hours to visit relatives and to reunite uh, with friends. So this has counted for a very big part of their economy during this holiday. Yeah. Uh, also, we know that people are probably relaxing after the big reunion dinner. What kind of experiences are people pursuing? I mean, clearly family is such a big part of this, but I'm sure after a lockdown for the past four years, people want more as well. Oh, yes. Uh, this, uh, you know, uh, the dinner has already become a very, very, you know, new trend, as well as an old trend for the uh, family reunion uh, this year. Uh, first of all, people are getting used to going out for the family reunion dinner. You see in Hong Kong, many of the Hong Kong, you know, uh, people are traveling north to Shenzhen mm. to try to book, you know, this, uh, uh, this New Year family reunion dinner in this new city. And also many people are ordering their food online through the big platform. You know, these are like half-made food and though uh, delivered to their doorstep and only with, uh, uh, you know, certain heating and uh, a little preparation. And then you can prepare a very, very exquisite dinner for a whole family. So this internet plus this, uh, you know, uh, booking on the uh, uh, big restaurant become very trendy in this uh, uh, New Year's, uh, you know, culture. Because when I was children, you know, when I was a child, uh, usually you only prepare the food within the family. You buy food from the, you know, supermarket and then you prepare with your parents, with your grandparents. You probably are gonna spend the whole day time prepare the dinner during the night. But now everything becomes very handy and very cost efficient. There's a lot to be said for having convenience during a big holiday. You know, our wonderful correspondents in China have done some amazing stories. The big uh, dragon celebration in the southern part uh, of the country, the different foods perhaps they eat in Shanghai as opposed to Beijing. Talk to us about some of the biggest celebrations as far as you are concerned. Well, first of all, I think uh, uh, we have several trends for the celebration. For example, everybody knows we have a tradition to watch the CCTV you know, performance gala. Uh, for the uh, New Year Eve in China. And, uh, you know, last night I had to go through the old four, uh, four and a half hour, you know, gala show. And the rate, well, probably is going to be the dream for every TV station. The rate uh, in the uh, country with 1.4 billion of viewers right. is more than uh, 36%. 36%. Can you believe? <laughs> this is probably a shocking number for any given nation and any given, you know, TV channels as well as for the you know, real people celebrating in many uh, cities, you know, because, uh, well, very lucky during this, uh, you know, spring uh, festival season, the weather started to get warmer. So there are like hundreds and thousands of people, actually there are millions of people flood into mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, city center, uh, center of the squares to celebrate the whole new, the new year and, you know, get across the eve. 
So oh, we're seeing in major cities, there are probably going to be more than millions of people in the city square, right. in Xi'an, millions of people in the city square of Changsha, and et cetera. And also another third trend is called online or cyber reunion. There are people, young people, younger generation, they, you know, they book a, you know, online game room and try to celebrate with their generation, uh, you know, like what we call the, in the, uh, the cartoon generation or the online generation. So they become very, very trendy. They say hi to their friends like thousands of miles away to each other. So this is a very, very new tradition and form a new culture of Chinese celebration. Well, uh, Chu Chang, we can, cannot thank you enough. We'll let you uh, go ahead and put your feet up and enjoy uh, some of the holiday. But thank you for bringing our viewers up to date. We appreciate your time. Thank you.